Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is week 5, segment 5, and we are continuing our discussion of the compilation process. As we discussed in the previous two videos, we know that the compilation process consists of several stages as shown here. In our last video, we looked at the pre-processing stage, which we learned could be manually performed using the CPP command line utility. The next couple of steps in the process are then handled by the CC command, performing the lexical, syntactic and semantic analysis, as well as the generation of intermediate code and, optionally, some optimization. After that, we are left with assembly code, which we can then turn into machine code using the assembler, invoked using the AS command. This will produce a binary object file, which we can then use to create an executable via the linker, invoked via the LD command. This final stage in the compilation process will be covered in our next video, leaving these two stages in the middle for today. Compilation proper and assembly. Let's once again illustrate each phase by example of our simple Hello World program. First, let's call up the manual page for the compiler once more. As we saw in our last video, we can stop the compilation process after each stage. E stops after pre-processing, S stops after compilation. So to pick up where we left off in our last video, let's run cc-e to produce our pre-processed C source code, which you will remember looks like this. Now we can take that file as input to our next stage and run cc-s hello.i, yielding the assembly output in the file hello.s. So now we have three files. Our initial C source code, .c, the preprocessed file, .i, and the compiled code turned assembly, .s. What does that look like? Here we see our main function, with the lfb local function begin and lfe local function end markers. Main calls func1, which we find up here, and which simply calls func2, which in turn we find up here and func2 moves lc0 and lc1 into some registers and calls printf. lc stands for local constants, and we see those defined as strings up here. These are the two arguments we pass to printf. Alright, so again, main calls func1, func1 calls func2, and func2 calls printf. Just like our C code. But these calls to func1 and func2 really are rather pointless, aren't they? And didn't we say that our compiler might be able to optimize our code at this stage? Let's check the manual page once more. There. CC takes several flags to indicate the level of optimization it should employ. When past these flags, it may then enable an increasing number of optimizations, each of which can also be individually turned on via these flags here, if you know what you're doing. Okay, so let's give this a try. We call CC with dash s dash o3 and look at the assembly output. Now our main function no longer calls func1 and instead performs the same steps previously done in func2. lc0 and 1 are moved into the registers and printf is called directly meaning the compiler has directly determined that calling func1 only to call func2 only to call printf can be left out completely. 
Okay, now we have turned our C code into assembly. Now what? Well, it's assembly. So let's call the assembler AS. AS is used to take this assembly input and produce a machine-dependent object file suitable to be linked using LD. You invoke AS trivially like this, now giving us finally a binary output file in L format for our target platform x86-64. What does this object file look like? Well, it's a binary format, so we can't just cat it, or can we? Well, not surprisingly, we can't make much sense of this file, but we do see certain strings here that look familiar. Similarly, we can extract any strings from this file using the strings utility, which shows our local constants, what we are printing, as well as the function names. Just like before, we can use the cc tool to perform all the steps up until here by passing the dash c flag, similar to how we had passed dash e and dash s for the previous stage. So cc-c hello.s and we see one file for each stage that we looked at. Can we execute the file now? Hmm, no exact permissions. Let's fix that. Hmm, no luck. As promised, the output of this stage is not yet an executable, but an object file that can be turned into an executable via the final stage of the compilation process, linking. But let's take a short break here and recap. We had already covered preprocessing in our previous video, and we just now saw that we can perform the compilation proper by passing the "-s flag to the compiler. We also observed how the compiler can make our code more efficient by enabling certain optimization techniques based on the dash "-o flags". The stage then produced the intermediate code, assembly, which we then handed to the AS tool to turn that into an object file. Alternatively, we are able to use cc-c to perform all the steps up to here as needed. Now all that's left is taking our object file and linking it but that'll be covered in our next video. Thanks for watching, and until the next time. Cheers!